Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are honored to have you here tonight for this Family Winter Camp webinar. We're going to be talking, of course, about this awesome camp that we have coming up February, February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We are really excited that you're here. Thank you much for joining us. My name is Ray Lambert, and then this is our agenda. Let me just tell you basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to share with you our vision, and then we're going to talk about the importance of sheltering and sleeping systems, and then just uh, some an experiment that I did this last week. Uh, also, geo shelters and sleeping systems with Doug Robinson. Uh, and then Q&A. We're going to open it up for Q&A at the end, and we would encourage you anytime that you want or feel a need to go ahead and type your questions in, and uh, we will uh, just direct you to that Q&A box. We'll make sure that we answer your questions when we get to that point. But again, we are very thankful that you're here. The drawing at the end of the webinar, for those who stay to the end, and most every single person stays to the end, we're going to be giving away this book called Staying Alive, and uh, it is a book that's written on basically survival, and it gives just some excellent information. So a lucky winner will be here today, and will receive this awesome drawing. We're very appreciative of that. Now, what I want to do is just play a video real quick, and uh, the video is... Um, just to introduce what we're talking about here. So if you'll give me just a minute, we'll fire this bad boy up. Folks, we're so excited that you've joined us on this adventure, this family winter camp out. My name is Ray Lambert and I will be teaching you over the next several weeks, along with several other experts on how to make this a very successful experience with your family. We are thrilled that you're here with us. We know that this is going to be a life-changing event for many people all over the United States and Canada and perhaps even other parts of the world. We wish you an excellent time as you go through this event. Take notes. Be sure that you prepare diligently to make this a very successful event for you and your family. Thank you so much for joining us. The vision basically of what we're doing here is uh, we just want to help you guys understand that our company is committed to doing some very simple things and that's teach people the skills of as far as preparedness are concerned. Uh, a lot of you know who Tom Monson is. Uh, Tom Monson recently passed away, in fact, just this week. And uh, he was 90 years old, just an outstanding person. Uh, he wrote an article in, in a magazine called The Enzyme in September of that year, and it's called uh, Are We Prepared? But he asked a question in that article called Are Your Skills Perfected? And one of the things that I've noticed about people uh, all over the country that I've taught in different parts of the world, uh, they have a lot of things, uh, but they don't have a lot of skills. And so that's what we're specializing in is basically helping people learn the skills that they need. And we're starting out with this amazing class on winter camping, and we want to empower people with this. And so we're going to have a series of webinars uh, that start, of course, tonight. We're going to have a webinar next Thursday, um, and we will continue to do that uh, throughout the month of January before we start our camp on February 1st through the 3rd. And the cool part about this camp is you can stay outside in your own yard. And we're going to continue connecting uh, even on the 31st of January. And then, of course, uh, we'll connect on the next day on the 1st, the next day on the 2nd, and even the next day on the 3rd. And uh, we'll have very specific assignments that we give to you guys tonight. And then it's assignments that we'll give to you next week and so on. All specifically geared to help you and your family prepare for this awesome camp. The, the people who have contributed to this great committee are Kevin and Sue Card. Lawrence Smith, Matt Hollis, Jason Stoll, Will Jensen, Sue Walker, Jim and Natalie Pemberton, Doug Knighting, Diana Olson, Grant Johnson, Shelly McDermott, Kelly Davis, and uh, myself, Ray Lambert. We really are very appreciative. I just want to begin by telling you an amazing story that just happened yesterday. One of my best teachers that I ever hire, uh, she's taught for me for years, one of the best researchers on the planet. She lives in Michigan. Her name is Cindy Clement. And uh, she sent me this text, and it, there was a picture, and it says, just a wee bit cold here. We're obviously here in the West not having any problems with cold weather this year. It's very, very mild. 
but she she said i said where is this picture at and she said it's in our house it's a door that comes in from the outside to the garage it isn't heated there at all so this is on the inside of the garage and that's amazing and of course uh it's going to be 20 degrees colder on friday or thursday night or something like that also the worst part for me is camping in the winter and she loves to camp in the winter with her husband they are great adventures they like to cross-country ski and go camping in the winter time she says also the worst part for me is camping in the winter when i have to go potty women have it a bit more difficult because we have to bear the whole uh bottom <laughs> and then i just started laughing and uh she said it's all because i lose so much body heat guys have it so much easier i'm really serious at times i will risk dehydration i would rather risk being dehydrated than bearing and that's an excellent point and so next week we're going to be talking about winter clothing we have uh, a couple of experts coming to help us on that but this is just the uh, the weather alert that cindy sent yesterday at 9 55 p.m which in utah where i'm at that would have been at uh, 7 55 p.m or almost eight o'clock and it says of course that the wind chill is going to be 10 below zero to 20 below zero coldest readings are expected during the morning hours and this is amazing <laughs> These are the seven main focuses for our family camp, and of course, how to have a warm, dry shelter. We're focusing on that tonight, and also sleeping in a uh, in sub-zero weather. We're talking about both of these tonight and giving you some ideas on how to prepare for that in an experiment that I've done this week. Also, boosting your immune system for cold weather. We'll uh, be recording a module for that. And then purifying water and proper sanitation when it's below zero. This will go over the 25th of uh, January. And then cook your food outside with alternative heat sources. This will actually be done on the 18th. And uh, Kevin Card's going to be teaching that one. And then winter clothing, keep warm uh, even without a fire. And this is Arto that's going to be teaching that all the way from uh, northern Utah, in fact, southern Idaho. And then last but not least, some outdoor wintertime games and activities that you can do with your family. These are the things that we're going to be teaching in advance of the event. And then when we get to the event, event we have some other classes that we're going to have that are gonna be really awesome. Uh, the benefits of a shelter, and I'm just going to teach this part. Um, there's huge benefits to a portable shelter, and um, obviously the number one would be privacy for you and your family. That makes a big difference. Protecting you from wind and water and snow, rain, that type thing. The thing that you need to realize with a tent, uh, there is not a lot of insulation factor in a tent unless your tent actually has insulated walls like the Arctic oven tents that you get up in uh, Anchorage, Alaska, or something like that. There are other tents that you can buy here in Utah that are manufactured here uh, that you can buy with insulation, but most don't. So if it's zero degrees outside, it's going to be zero degrees in your tent. As soon as that sun goes down, it gets extremely cold real fast in a tent. But it's a place that you can keep warm because it does protect you from that wind and that water and so on. It also protects and stores your belongings and it's a place to rest and rejuvenate and so on. We're gonna talk about how critically important rest is, especially when you're uh, sheltering like this in the middle of a sub-zero condition. And, and it's also possible to have a, a heating system in it. Uh, you'll see a tent that I have in just a few minutes. I have several tents that I have heat jacks in or stove jacks in and uh, that is an awesome opportunity for people to see or to warm themselves and so on. But how to have a warm, dry shelter. Make sure that the water runs away from your shelter. Think of up, not down. Always basically, when you're setting up your tent, you need to think of making sure that the water will run down away from your tent and always, if you can, set it up on a smooth, flat surface. I do a lot of climbing, repelling, repelling and so on, have a lot of equipment that way but I have never hung off of a cliff and I don't plan to. Uh, I would rather do a lot of other things besides that, but um, it really would be important to have a smooth flat surface for that and make sure that you're not camped in a game trail or in the middle of a road. That would be one of the worst things that you could do is wake up and have a couple of bull, bull moose run right through your camp or your tent. And then uh, always uh, realize when you're setting up a camp like this near your water and your full fuel sources. And then your tent, of course, needs to be water repellent. And the last but not least, the item there is uh, take good care of the shelter. 
uh, dry it out before putting it in storage and make sure that you're aware of uh, why you need to dry that out of course is that this camp uh, also is for people that don't have a backyard and we're going to give you some ideas in just a few minutes of how you can do that we just lost our video feed for just a second I'm going to click a couple of buttons and we'll, there we go we're back on but uh, this picture right here on your screen is in Denmark and in Denmark right in Copenhagen and, and a few of the other big cities there are many apartment buildings and so even if you're in a, an apartment, we're going to show you how that you can camp in your backyard or camp there in your apartment and make it a cold winter experience. And we, I know, have people, uh, as I said on that video, people from all over the United States that are with us. We have people on this webinar from Hawaii tonight. We have people on this webinar from um, back east where it's so darn cold. And we have, an, uh, it looks like about five people that are from Canada, uh, which is interesting on this webinar tonight. And so um, one of the benefits of a warm sleeping system is better, deeper sleep. Now, why is that so important? Sleep has everything to do with health. My background before I joined uh, or before I started this company here was specifically in health. That's what I have taught for many, many years all over the United States and different parts of the world. And uh, I with passion teach about health. And so one of the benefits of a warm, comfortable sleep is deeper sleep. When you're in a deeper sleep environment, you basically go into a REM sleep and that dramatically improves your immune system. Your immune system, of course, is so critically important to making sure that you remain healthy and strong. Um, you have the ability to think much more clearly when you have a deep sleep. Your intelligence and memory go up. You live a longer life and dramatically lessens the impact of Alzheimer's disease because of sleep. One of the huge benefits of sleep is your brain, when you're in a deep REM sleep over a long period of time, you literally go to what's called uh, where your brain shrinks down and your glymphatic system literally starts to clean out your brain cells. The glymphatic system is the second circulatory system of the brain. It actually connects directly into the lymphatic system which is the second circulatory system of the body. And that glymphatic system cleans all of the toxins and dead cells and so on out of the brain and sends them, of course, into uh, the body to be processed and the, into the lymph sites and that type thing. But it's important that we understand that sleep is critical. If we're ever in a stressful situation where we are not sleeping at night, that will have an uh, an impact on our ability to think. It'll have an impact on our ability to be able to remember things. And so sleeping is huge. You also have better physical strength and stamina as a result of sleeping and a, a much more sparkling personality. Uh, if you've ever saw anyone uh, in your own family or perhaps yourself, when they are without sleep, they're not as happy as they normally are. And so it does have an impact on our attitude and the way that we look at life. Um, basically, how to sleep in a sub-zero environment, if at all possible, sleep in a warm, dry shelter. And again, we've talked about that. Use the appropriate sleeping system for the time of year. From 90 degrees to minus 50 degrees, uh, it will come in very handy, making sure that it's dry. And uh, we've received some awesome counsel today on that uh, in the other web webinars that we've had, which is, of course, exactly like the one that you're doing tonight. And also, um, there is a suggestion in having layers in your sleeping system. Just like onions and ogres have layers, your sleeping system needs to have layers also, and mine do. And you'll see some examples of that in just a few minutes. And then uh, insulated or off the ground makes a huge difference. When that ground is frozen, like in this photograph right here, uh, it's very dangerous for you to be directly on the ground. If you can get insulated through a pad or a cot, uh, it makes a big difference. A hammock is somewhat 
great if in fact you have warm air around you. If you are up in a hammock and you have cold air around you, there's not a lot of insulation factor even though you might be in a really well insulated bag. And so just be aware that uh, that cuts back on the bag's insulating capability because there's less air in that insulation. When there's air in there, it actually slows the, um, for lack of a better word, the dis dissipation of heat. <laughs> I apologize for not being able to say that correctly. Now, I recently did an experiment for four nights in a row, and I just want to share this with you here where I live in Spanish Fork, Utah. Um, on December 30th, night one, um, it was 26 degrees. That was the coldest that it received. Uh, the sleeping bag that I slept in was rated for zero. Uh, I had no shelter. I was under the stars. I had a pad. I was on a cot, and I wore a coat to bed, which you can see right here. Uh, the results were I was somewhat warm. 26 degrees in a sleeping bag rated at zero. I was warm, but I wasn't toasty warm. I slept with my head under uh, the cover, and I had kind of a restless night because I was not warm, if that makes sense. And so even with a sleeping bag that's rated for zero when it was 26 degrees, when it's really not that cold outside, I had a difficult time. Night two is December 31st, the end of the year. It was 26 degrees outside. Uh, I had two of the same type sleeping bags, both rated for zero, one inside the other. No shelter again under the stars. Pat Todd wore, wore my coat to bed. The results were toasty warm. I slept with my head under, felt rested, and much better in the morning. Uh, significantly better sleep after all the nuclear explosions went off on December 31st. <laughs> that, was, that was one loud night to be sleeping out with uh, these great big, huge. Uh, fireworks going off everywhere. That was funny. Then, of course, on uh, the night of January the 1st, for the people that need to sleep inside, I did an experiment. I actually did this in my bedroom where I closed off all of the heat vents in my bedroom. There's two. I closed off the door to my uh, master bathroom and also closed off the door to the hallway. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I slept on the floor in an unzipped sleeping bag, the same bag that I slept with outside, but it was just one bag and I unzipped it all the way and I put a pad on there and uh, wore my pajamas and a shirt. I slept right beneath the window and I was somewhat warm, I slept with above uh, sleeping bag as mentioned, not in a deep sleep and, and I woke up a lot that night. Again, and I'm estimating, I don't have the exact temperature, it was probably 25 to 40 degrees in that room. It was very cold in the room as you went through into the bathroom or in the other parts of the house and and so on. But then on night four, January the 2nd, it was 17 degrees outside and again I slept on my bed this night and the thing that was interesting is I just took two blankets, I stripped everything off the bed and I took two blankets, I folded one over and uh, put that down, that was my main blanket. So I had three layers of blankets that I could use. The second one I folded and put on top and then I had a comforter that I had laying to my side. I went to sleep and I just had one little thin blanket over the top of me with both windows open. And I woke up at 3.30, I was cold. I was literally cold. And so I pulled the second layer and felt okay, felt a lot more comfortable, went back to sleep. But by 4.30, I woke up again and I pulled the third layer of that blanket over. So I had the one underneath me, and then uh, I had three layers of these thin, but very well insulated blankets on top of me. And uh, at 5.30, I finally woke up and pulled that comforter over the top of me. And so insulated, or I was inside my uh, bedroom in my house, no heat, two big windows open, shut all the interior doors, as I said, and, and so on, but I was somewhat warm, but I woke up a lot. And so again, this just helps you understand uh, this little experiment, this four nights in a row, and I'm going to be sleeping out a ton um, in the coming days, doing all kinds of cool things uh, and giving you guys reports in the coming weeks. But uh, I won't be the main teacher in the coming weeks. I'll just talk about my experience outside. But the reason I show you this is so that you can decide three things. It's time for a change, it's time uh, it's it's up to you which direction you choose. Basically, am I going to actually positively sleep out on February 1st through the 3rd? 
I guarantee you I will. I will be out there. And in fact, I've already slept out several nights in a row. I've slept out five nights already in the last few. Choose a shelter. Get it out. Make sure it's all there. Find a space for it where you're going to put it up and set a date for it. One person in our first webinar suggested uh, that you put your tent in your front room if you can't sleep out in the yard. Just put a small tent in the front room and stay there. If you don't have a four season tent uh, and it's small enough, you could actually do that. Put it in your family room, put it in your front room. Just make sure that if you're opening the windows that you do not have any exposed plumbing that's going to be exposed to that ice cold air. You don't want to freeze any plumbing in your house and have a flood in the morning. It would be a good idea if you are afraid for your plumbing to leave it running at a very small rate through the night so that there's no problem with making sure in the morning that you have still uh, everything going. And then the last, choose a sleeping system and, and test it and uh, make sure that you test it out so that every member of your family that's going to join you has a similar sleeping system and you know what's going on. Now, what I'm going to show you is what we call the tent video. And uh, the tent video is a video that just talks about me setting up a tent this week and the vital importance of um, making sure that you take some time to get that done. One of the things that we need to practice is we need to practice the ability to put our equipment together in the summer, in the winter, and so on. And so between now and the 1st of February, you do need to put your tent up and make sure that you have the ability to get this done. This tent, uh, it took me, well, we started at about 4 o'clock. It's, it's 5.07 right now. And I had help just for my granddaughter, my 11-year-old granddaughter, and her 11-year-old friend. The tent is, is rather big. This tent will hold 22 people and uh, it has three stove jacks in it. Uh, two right here in the front and one right here on the side. You need to practice setting up your equipment. And that's one of the things that if we're ever faced with the problem of the power going out and we have to go into our tent, we can't habitate in our house anymore, we need to do the very best we can to know how to put that equipment up in a hurry. Three vital points that you need to be aware of. Number one, Make sure that you have all of your tent poles and everything organized so that you know exactly how everything fits together, number one. Number two, make sure that you practice setting up your tent and of course get some help. Usually when I set up this tent, I set it up with two other men. Not this time, it was me and two little girls. And it would make a huge difference to set up something this big with some help. Now this is something that's going to be challenging to camp outside. But you need to realize you can learn to do this tough thing now when it's easy, when it's in your backyard, or you can wait till all heck breaks loose and you may die trying. It's your choice. End that part of the presentation. I'm done presenting now. We're going to turn the time over to Doug Robinson of Jail Shelters. And Doug has a great presentation for us and uh, he's going to tell us some really neat things, Doug. I'll activate your mouse so that you have the ability to advance the slides. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, like I said, my name is Doug Robinson. I am uh, the owner of Geo Shelters. Uh, so we are a, a company uh, that specializes in geodesic dome shelters. And uh, they're very large, uh, very sturdy shelters. They're kind of a premium, a premium shelter is what we, as, as what we call them. Um, so historically, uh, Geo Shelters has focused a lot on emergency preparedness, um, camping, hunting. Um, our shelters are also used in uh, disaster relief situations, uh, command centers, military housing, uh, uh, triage, hospital type situations, and, and even schools. And so there's just a, a, a great, um, uh, uh, I guess, versatility with Geo Shelters. They can be used in a lot of different situations. And so. Um, my, my presentation today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we have in winter survival or uh, winter camping. Um, so these, some of these challenges are a little bit different than what you would experience in, in the summer. Um, so some of the challenges in the winter that you have is moisture, you know, snow, rain, um, uh, ground and personal condensation. So um, that's moisture coming up from the ground or uh, moisture coming from you, you know, just breathing inside your shelter will create uh, moisture in the air, or it's uh, 
snow and things that you that you uh, bring into the shelter when you're coming in and out. So all of these things uh, will get your clothes wet, damp, and uh, moisture is an uh, extremely fast killer uh, for people in, in winter if you're not prepared for it. And so um, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the challenges with moisture. Uh, the second one is temperatures. Uh, hypothermia and frostbite can set in, uh, even in what we would consider mild temperatures. So uh, there's been a lot of cases of, of death uh, for people who have been in, been in 50 degree weather. Um, but they just were not prepared for the situation. They were not dressed appropriately, um, were not prepared for it, and, and ended up, uh, yeah, you know, paying for that with their life. Uh, the second or the third thing is snow weight. So snow uh, can accumulate very quickly on top of a shelter, and it can be very very heavy. So snow on average weighs about 15 pounds for every cubic foot, um, but it can go all the way up to 30 pounds if it's very dense and wet snow. And so you can imagine how, if you have a fairly large shelter, how that will, um, how much that can weigh in the end. And so one of the problems is, is it can break, uh, break the poles in your tent, it can damage the cover on it, um, and, and collapse it on top of you. And so uh, snow weed is, is a very big problem. And then wind is the fourth one. And so strong winds um, uh, are kind of like the snow weight. It will uh, damage the structure by ripping the cover um, bending or breaking poles, um, and even lifting shelters up. So there's been a lot of cases where people don't stake their shelter down properly, and that and their shelter can be uh, lifted up and carried away by very strong winds. And so, so today's uh, class, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these challenges with, with that we have in winter winter camping, but how geo shelters is a little bit different and and can be a solution for a lot of these problems. Um, like I mentioned, uh, geo shelters, uh, we do a geodesic, sh uh, geodesic shaped, uh, shelter. So here's an uh, image of one for you guys. Um, this is our 24 foot model. So 24 foot model gives you about 452 square feet of space. Um, it's extremely portable, um, and, uh, it breaks down into about four duffel bags. So you can carry it and move it around if you need to. Um, I can I fit it in the trunk of my car whenever I'm going to shows and things like that. Um, it's made with aluminum poles um, and it's incredibly durable. So we're going to talk a little bit about each one of these um, aspects. So the first one was moisture. So moisture, um, like we mentioned, can come in from snow and um, rain and things like that. So the first thing that we did with geo shelters is we designed the shelter. Um, to have a polycoated vinyl cover. So this is completely waterproof. Um, it's a plastic cover, and so it, it um, won't leak through after a while, or you know, if it gets super saturated, you're, you're, you're just fine, because nothing will get through it. Um, the second thing that we did is we made the floor uh, a separate unit from the actual cover on the top. So the floor goes and un underneath, and it wraps around the frame comes up the frame for about a foot. So unless you um, get water runoff that's over a foot high or, or things like that, then it's not gonna be coming into your shelter. Uh, the other thing is we have vestibules available for our shelters, which allow you to uh, kind of a staging area so you're not tracking moisture back into your shelter. You can, you can change in these little vestibules and, and uh, you'll put on some dry clothes and things when you come out from the snow and enter your shelter dry. Uh, we also have air vents that allow airflow through it. And then the dome shape in and of itself actually allows for better air circulation. Um, the next uh, problem is uh, temperatures. So we talked about how temperatures can really affect, affect you when you're camping. So uh, the geo shelter is designed, uh, it does have a stove jack in it. And that stove jack can be changed out um, very quickly and easily depending on the size of stove that you have. So, uh, some of the smaller stoves will have like a four and a half, um, four and a half inch uh, smokestack. And so you can go there, you can go with a larger stove that uses a six inch, um, et cetera. And so uh, you can kind of customize it um, with your stove um, for heat and it will, will help out a lot with your with uh, cold temperatures. Uh, the next thing is it's designed. Because, it's, because it is a dome, it circulates the air um, a lot better than a traditional square. Tent. Um, the square tent has you, you, you tend to get cold corners and, and 
pockets of cold air, whereas a dome will evenly distribute um, temperatures throughout the, the shelter and gives you a more uniform uh, temperature. Uh, the other thing is that uh, because of its shape, it gives you a uh, maximum exposure to um, the sun. Uh, a traditional square tent, uh, you're losing a lot. You don't get as very much sun um, on it during the mornings and evenings, uh, or with a dome, it, it's maximizing the sunlight that you can get to help heat up your shelter. Um, it's also um, has a lot less surface area on it, and that makes it a lot more efficient for you when you're heating it. And, and uh, lastly, one of the biggest things is um, Geo Shelters also offers an insulation package. So Ray talked a little bit about that at the beginning, that there are some shelters that have insulation on them. This is one of those ones. And so uh, the way that the insulation works is you have your cover on the outside of the frame, and the insulation uh, for the Geo Shelter attaches to the inside of the frame. And what that does is it creates a pocket of air from the outside to the inside. And that pocket of air acts as insulation. Uh, the material for the insulation is also um, very similar to a space blanket. So it's a metallic material that has been bonded to, um, to a fabric. And so when you put that up, what that, that reflective material does is it radiates the heat back inside of your shelter, um, making it a lot warmer for you. Um, and then um, because of its size and strength, you're able to um, uh, put a lot of cots and hammocks and things like that in it uh, so that you can get off the ground because typically when you are camping in the winter you're going to be setting up your your camp or shelter on frozen ground or on uh, snow and ice and so your floor will get cold and so you want to try to keep yourself up off of that. Um, the next thing is uh, next problem is snow weight so um, the geodesic dome uses uh, two really strong structures mixed together. Um, so triangles are the strongest structure in nature. They, what they do is they evenly distribute weight to the two other points on it. So when you combine a triangle uh, with a dome, um, it cascades that, that pressure down um, throughout, the, throughout the dome. So it evenly distributes its weight. So that's one of the great benefits of it. So if you look right here on this image, each one of these connection points where, where the uh, frame comes all together, call that a hub. Each one of these hubs, because of its design, is able to uh, support several hundred pounds. It's about 500 pounds per hub is what it can, is what it can support. And so it, it gets quite a bit of, of strength from it. And the more, more you have on it, it just kind of uh, hunkers down a little better. Um, and so, uh, the dome shape, is, just because of its, its design, is, it really is the most efficient um, shape out there and, and the strongest. And so um, the dome also is, is one of the most effective uh, shapes for shedding snow because you've got the, the angles on it. The snow tends to just kind of slide right off of it. If you do happen to get a very heavy snow and it accumulates quickly and you can't get it off, you can up. Um, you're pretty safe in here. We, have, uh, we do have a shelter that has been set up for the last four and a half years um, up in the mountains in northern Colorado with a gentleman who's been living in it year round. And he has um, uh, sent me a lot of images over the last couple of weeks of some of the snowstorms that they received and things like that. And um, it, it's just amazing to me that you know, he can have uh, eight feet of snow on top of the shelter. And you can't even tell that there's a geo shelter right there underneath it. But, um, he's able to uh, be just fine in it. He says that he's um, very comfortable and warm in it. Um, the final uh, problem that we have is wind. So the geodesic dome, um, the shape of it just allows wind to kind of whip around it. The traditional shelter with, with flat walls um, work kind of like a dam, and so you get wind that's blocking up against it which will try to lift and move your shelter and damage it. It uh, bends poles and things like that, whereas a geodesic shape, um, the wind tends to just kind of wrap around it and it, it presses the shelter actually farther down to the ground. And then lastly, like we mentioned, with the moisture side of it, it is a polycoated vinyl fabric and so it is completely wind and water resistant. Um, so just a kind of a summary uh, really quick, the main benefits of a geo shelter as opposed to a traditional shelter is um, its effectiveness against wind, um, its size, 
You know, it's, it's a, one of the largest shelters out there and it is self-supporting, so you don't have poles in the middle of your shelter um, blocking your weight. Um, it is one that will evenly distribute weight on it and can support a lot of weight and can hang things in it. And it will evenly circulate air to give you that even temperature and then will have maximum sun exposure. Um, one of the great things about geo shelters is our ability to customize it for your own needs. So depending on where you live and your own personal um, situation, you can customize the shelter in a lot of different ways. Um, so we have you know, different sizes of shelters, uh, different door configurations on it. You can also do um, things like gear lofts, which add about 200 additional uh, square feet of storage space for you. As you can see right here in this image, um, right up here on the ceiling is one of the gear lofts and that will wrap around um, the inside of, um, on the top of the dome. Uh, we can do upgraded floors that are a lot thicker um, and stronger for high foot traffic people. Um, you can do stoves and ovens um, like we have here in this image, uh, cots, um, uh, insulate, uh, you could, like I mentioned, the insulation. Um, and the insulation will just attach to the inside of the frame right here. Uh, you can hang room dividers. We offer room dividers so you can section off and partition off parts of the dome uh, to use as rooms for, for a little more privacy. Uh, we can do screen doors and vestibules and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and lastly, finally, what I want to talk about is, is uh, we're talking about um, not just shelters, but sleeping units. Um, this is one that we have helped design here at, uh, that I have helped design here at Geo Shelters. Um, this one is our extra large uh, layered bedroll. And so what makes this a little different is you can use it all the time. So it's, if you look at this image right here, um, this uh, sleeping bag has different layers in it. So the layers, um, depending on how cold it is, is how deep you sleep into the sleeping bag. So a top layer is kind of what's used more in the summer. The middle layer is kind of spring and fall. And then the lower layer is if it is um, extremely cold. Um, out there. And so we have taken this out into extremely cold, negative 20 degrees uh, uh, temperatures and uh, been incredibly warm and toasty in it all night. Um, like Ray mentioned, there's, there's uh, different standards and things for, for sleeping bags and one that says zero degrees um, will keep you alive at zero degrees, but you're not going to be comfortable in this. And this one is actually rated for negative um, 40. And so at negative 20, you're still incredibly comfortable. Uh, the outside of it is a, a, uh, a canvas, duck cloth, um, that is water resistant. And then the inside of it is uh, uh, flannel with a uh, polyester fiber inside of it. And so um, one of the main differences with this is if you notice, there's no uh, sewing over the top of it to keep the, the uh, uh, sorry, the, the fill and the insulation inside of it in place. And the reason we did that is every time you stick a needle into a material and especially insulation, you're compacting that down one, so, so it's not as effective. And then number two is every time that needle, everywhere where that needle hole is, creates an, a space for, for heat to escape. Uh, so what we've done is we've gotten this um, polyester fiber fill called Lamlite, and we have bonded it to the flannel itself. And so it's actually bonded inside um, of each one of these layers and so it keeps it all in place and uh, makes you a lot warmer because you don't have any of those sewing holes for it. Um, and then uh, lastly is just it's super um, uh, large and comfortable. So you know it is a larger larger sleeping bag. I do have a friend of mine who um, is an uh, old college football player who is uh, 6'10 and about 350 pounds, big guy, and he uh, he prefers sleeping in this all winter long, actually. So he sleeps out on his back porch in, in one of these because he, uh, he finds him so comfortable. And uh, I, even at his height, he, he said, I asked him if he needed us to customize one and make it a little bigger for him. And he said, no, he fits uh, just great in this one. Um, so anyway, those are all of the things that uh, kind of some of the things that we do here at uh, Geo Shelters. If you have any questions or anything, you're free to give us a call. Or if you want to check us out, you can uh, find us at geoshelters.com. Doug, you rock. Awesome job, buddy. Thank you. We're just going to open it up for questions right now. And we really, again, appreciate Doug being here with us. 
There's a number of questions that have come up. Doug, do you see those questions? I do. Okay. Um, you want to? I'll answer the first one, Joyce. It says, "Can we get a copy of your slides for this presentation?" Um, we will have an outline of the presentation, not the slides. Uh, we anticipate packaging everything and selling it after this event is over in one system where you have all the videos, all of the slide presentations, and even a transcription of every single presentation that's done, including at the camp, so that you have an awesome resource that you can go to time and time again to refer back to on how to make winter camping successful. All right, Anonymous Tendi uh, says, how do you keep snow out of a snow stove jack if the fire goes out for whatever reason? Um, Any suggestions on that, Doug? I have some suggestions, go ahead. Yeah, so if, if you actually have the your smokestack uh, still installed in there, you're, you, get a, you can get a little bit of moisture inside your uh, wood burning stove and um, you should be okay with that. Um, um, if, you, if you actually take your stove out, um, like geo shelters, we do have a flap that will cover um, that stove jack area um, when it's not in use. And, and it's just quickly, easily removable. It's got a double layer, um, uh, thick Velcro, uh, industrial Velcro, that you can just rip it out and then close a, a flap on it so that you uh, can keep water out. Awesome, that's great. Um, the other question is, with a heated geo shelter, is it okay to sleep in a hammock in the cold? This is from Sue Butterfield. Um, is, is it okay to sleep in the cold? Yeah, as long as you can keep the uh, the, the geo shelter. Um, we have we have done uh, quite a few, you know, obviously quite a few runs testing with the geo shelter, mm -hmm. and um, as long as you're able to keep it um, warm enough. Uh, for you, which um, with the insulation packages and things like that, um, we've had no problem sleeping in, in hammocks. In fact, uh, for the camp out for the first through the third of February that we'll be participating in also, um, we're gonna be taking a geo shelter up into the mountains in Utah, up into the uh, Wasatch Mountains, and uh, I will be sleeping in a hammock in it. So um, it's, it's actually a lot more comfortable for me in a hammock, so. I love that, and that, and you can do that with your sore back, and it works okay. Then, Doug, it does. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, hope that answers your question, Miss Sue. Um, let's see. Tony Christensen says, "Can you go over again about setting up a dome tent properly on the ground? Also, what is the difference between a geodome and a vital dome?" Um. So uh, going over, so when you're talking about uh, setting the dome up properly on the ground, like clearing the space, so you've got to clear the space, um, set it up, um, so you lay your, your ground cover first, uh, set up your frame on top of it, and then you put the cover over it. Um, and then proper, the proper way to do it is you're actually going to want to dig a small trench around your geodome and um, bury the, the very ends of the cover down and then stick it down um, so it's very secure. Um, some of the differences between uh, geodome and vital domes, a lot of it is the size and the portability of it um, and uh, the accessories. So geodomes, uh, we've gone with um, aluminum poles um, as opposed to uh, steel poles. Uh, the aluminum poles we've been able to get almost um, identical um, strength because of the shape of the dome by using aluminum, but it weighs about a third of the weight of the, of the um, steel frame. So we're, we're about a third of the, the weight, makes it a lot more portable. Um, um, it makes it a lot more portable, a little lighter and easier to use. Um, the other okay. thing is our ability to customize it. Like I said, we've got a lot of different accessories and things like that and that you can put up like the um, gear lock and things like that to give you a lot of uh, more customization. Okay, very good. Um, this, just um, two other questions. Clifford said, are you going to give other uh, vendors a chance to present like the Geodome guy here, Doug Robinson? And we actually had two other uh, people invited and uh, they didn't have time at the very last minute and we are very sorry about that. So. 
normally you will have multiple people presenting um, and talking about their resources that they have and the tools that they have. We just think that that's critical uh, that you guys get to see some information. We're going to teach you next week a lot more training on clothing. Uh, you'll hear that, and, um, and so we're going to have some resources there to teach you how to get that done. Joy says, how do you keep your bottom from freezing sleeping in a hammock? So for for um, for me, as as long as you can keep the temperature um, inside the dome um, fifty to sixty degrees, which is very very doable in the geo shelter with the insulation, um, I haven't found any problems uh, with it. If you if it does get below that, like if you I don't have um, if if you if you know the temperature is near below that, like for instance, you don't have a, a wood burning stove or something in your shelter, um, then we would recommend not not using a hammock um, but you just want to put something underneath underneath you in the hammock um, that that will help insulate you a, a little better because uh, when you are laying if you are in like a sleeping bag and you're laying in the hammock you are pressing down on you are pressing down onto the uh, insulation inside your sleeping bag which makes it less less effective and so you want to add something underneath it um, uh, to help um, to help counter that. Okay, awesome. Um, appreciate that very much. Last question we're going to answer, then we're going to end the call here. It says, I really dislike being in the cold. This is from Sue Butterfield. Do you have any suggestions how to stay warm outdoors, whether camping or just outside in the elements, on a budget? Uh, next week, we will talk about clothing that can be done. Layers is huge. And insulated layers uh, make a big difference. Wicking layers, allowing the moisture to be taken away from your body and allowing that moisture to be removed. If you have waterproof clothing on that keeps moisture next to your skin, that's when you get into trouble uh, and can really get cold in a big hurry. If you're out working hard, um, it becomes quite dangerous. And so we'll talk about that next week, Miss Sue. But as far as uh, sleeping systems are concerned, layers would be best. And so let me just uh, thank Doug for taking the time to answer all these questions. Basically, your assignment this week as we uh, end the webinar is we want to just point out to you guys that you need to meet with your family and, and have a council and ask them, uh, number one, are we going to do this? And then choose a shelter. Get it out. Make sure it's all there. Find a space for it and set a date to put it up. I would encourage you to put it up way before fe February 1st. Make sure that you put it up and you know that it works. And then choose sleeping systems for every member in your family. Sue Butterfield, this goes along with what you just asked. Uh, if, in fact, you are going to be sleeping out, you need to be testing some sleeping systems that would be comfortable for you. Perhaps you could test it in your bedroom first uh, or in a room in your house where you're not going to do uh, freeze plumbing and uh, just test it in there and just make sure it's okay. Uh, there's nothing worse than being cold. I know for a fact it's, it's terrible. but um, I have uh, great success in being able to stay warm, have done for the last five nights in a row, and, and, uh, and we'll be back out there uh, doing the same thing for several more nights. I plan on doing most of the month outside, and I'm testing all kinds of things to make sure that we continue to gather data and, and, and collect it that way. So very good question. Next week, we're going to be talking about winter clothing, and this, uh, Webinar will be on prepared.net. You'll see it listed, and it'll probably take till Saturday morning to get the PDF uh, and the checklist and also everything you need on there. And then next week's webinar, you can come back to the website and register, and we're also going to send an email out to everyone that's registered for these four webinars today. And we encourage you, of course, to send it to your family and friends and that type of thing. We really appreciate everyone being here. We just want to find out now who our lucky winner is before we end the webinar. For this awesome book that's called Staying Alive. And the lucky winner is going to go to Gail Tomlinson. Gail Tomlinson, that's T-O-M-L-I-N-S-O-N. -N. Gail, the way that we need to have you uh, communicate with us is we need your address and phone number to training at prprd.net, the same email that you received uh, in getting 
into this webinar, just send that your contact information and we will get this shipped out to you. Thanks so much, Doug, for joining us. Thanks so much, folks, for being with us tonight. We sincerely appreciate your excellence in uh, doing the very best you can, but we just want to remind you, you can learn to be tough now when it's easy and when your house is so clear, or you can really get yourself into trouble when all heck breaks out, breaks out and you may have a problem with living through that. So it's good that you use the choice to prepare for this event now that you have a chance.